People often notice that the meters in different DAWs or different plugins often yield slightly different readings on the same signal, even when they're the same type of meter. This may be because meters have different ballistics. Ballistics refers to the timing of the meter, both the initial response time to transient peaks or attacks of sounds, and the decay time of the meter when the level drops. This is especially important with peak meters. A peak meter with a faster response time may indicate a slightly higher level than another. Also, transient peaks are so short in duration that a peak meter that tracked the transient exactly would rise and fall too quickly for the eye to follow, so the meter has to hold the maximum level of each transient briefly before it's allowed to drop to make sure the levels of the transients will register visually. So different timing ballistics will result in slightly different readings from different meters with the same signal. Some DAWs offer a choice of metering types and ballistics. A good example of this is Pro Tools, which offers a particularly wide range of different peak and averaging responses for its channel strip meters. Here's a quick look at a few examples of the different ballistics of some of these options. Many peak meters also include a persistent maximum level indicator. This will hold the maximum peak level so the engineer can see if any brief overloads may have occurred. Some of the more advanced peak plus average meters will also provide readouts of overall average levels. And some may even offer a histogram of level changes throughout the last playback. This is more likely to be found in dedicated metering suites, especially those designed for post-production and broadcast applications, where that information may be needed to comply with mandated level standards. Again, more on that a little later in the course. Before I move on to other aspects of level metering, I want to briefly mention another very common application. So far, I've been discussing meters that directly indicate the level the gain of a signal. But some level meters are used instead to indicate not the actual gain of the signal, but the change in gain, specifically the amount of gain reduction being applied by dynamics processing. A good example would be the metering you often find in compressors, both hardware and virtual models. There are often input and output level meters, but since the compressor's function is to dynamically reduce gain, is usually a third type, a gain reduction meter. This can be either a bar graph or a mechanical or faux mechanical type. Sometimes a single meter is switchable between input gain, output gain, and gain reduction. Instead of sitting at the bottom of the scale, a gain reduction meter's default reading would indicate no change in gain, and whenever the compressor kicks in, it indicates the amount of gain reduction being applied to the signal. This can be a useful indication, especially for novice users, of how aggressively compression is being applied, and given the widespread use of compression in modern mixing, many DAWs employ gain reduction metering right in the channel strips themselves. But keep in mind, this kind of global gain reduction indication may not always reflect all the compression being applied. Gain reduction from third-party dynamics plugins is often not included for technical reasons. Next up, I'll continue with a look at the different level scales for analog and digital metering.